the Five Corners area became a major intersection with Foundry Street used as a main road into West Bridgewater. Yet, the area still clung to its rural roots without stoplights and just one gas station at the intersection. Things change, as they always do, and with the arrival of Shaw's and the plaza in 1984, developers started to take notice of the area. New streets and condominiums went in, new construction and traffic lights were added. Today, the bustling intersection has three gas stations, multiple businesses, banks, and an assisted living residence along two highly traveled roads, Route 123 and Route 106. Growing pains along the way have met with businesses closing and new ones opening, houses being built, and traffic, both pedestrian and vehicular, increasing. As the town has struggled through recessions, economic growth, and trying to raise money to meet its expenses, there was always the chorus of new businesses are needed raised at town meeting. Five Corners would seem like the logical place to locate. However, there was a problem for any restaurant, coffee shop, or bistro that wanted to move to the area. Because of the location and the septic system usage, wastewater management would not be able to accommodate the amount of people a business would attract. So, um, well, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Connor Reed. I'm the town administrator here in Easton, and I'm joined today with Michael Blanchard. He is the assistant town administrator, uh, and we are here to talk a bit about Five Corners Sewer. So, uh, by way of background, Five Corners Sewer is the third uh, of three sewer districts that the town has advanced in the uh, almost 10 years now since town meeting voted to adopt sewer districts back in 2010. Uh, and even that adoption of sewer districts itself follows uh, years and years of planning and effort by the selectmen and a variety of folks in town drafting what's called a comprehensive wastewater management plan in the early 2000s. Uh, that plan was finalized in the early 2010s. That part of that plan was adopting sewer districts in Easton, uh, including the Five Corners. Uh, other districts include Northeastern, so we've seen that sewer project move ahead and is now complete. That includes uh, Quisit, which is nearly complete. And then specifically to Five Corners, uh, that project has been advancing in earnest uh, for many years. Uh, back in 2015, town meeting voted to appropriate over $8 million uh, for the selectmen of Easton to enter into what's called an intermunicipal agreement to purchase wastewater treatment capacity from the town of Mansfield uh, to treat that area in Five Corners. The project was designed and permitted starting in 2015, and the first part of sewer construction uh, is actually already complete. That's bringing pipe from Robert Drive uh, down to Mansfield. So that was completed in 2016 and 17. So that's roughly $11 million of work that is already appropriated uh, and complete. Uh, which leaves the second phase, so that's phase two construction, that's the largest part, that's estimated at 13.5 million. That was appropriated by town meeting in May of 2018. It is 100% designed. It is being uh, bid as we speak. We anticipate bids on the construction to come in uh, this month. Uh, and we anticipate a contract being awarded in the next two months with construction to start in summer. So. It's phase two is the final step. It is the largest step of this project, but it is the final step in a project that has been uh, moving towards where we are today for nearly a decade. So uh, as far as a question of could it be delayed, is it past the point of turning back, we've already purchased that capacity. So the town of Easton owns that treatment capacity from Mansfield. If we were not to advance this phase of a construction project, we would have that capacity with nothing going to it. We have to pay for that capacity. The first phase of a construction is already done. So uh, it is moving forward. And were we to delay the project, because that is a question that has come up, uh, what we are seeing is that construction costs are rising. Uh, and barring major economic downturns, where you may be able to get a, a cheaper construction project just due to the uh, broader economic conditions, the direction that construction costs usually go is up. So delaying the project would probably drive costs up further, and that's not something that uh, the town is looking to do. While forward-thinking town officials had discussed the future needs of a sewer district as far back as 1970, it wasn't until 2004 that a comprehensive wastewater management plan was begun. 
before 2004, and while the plan was being drawn up and finalized in 2014, more and more septic systems were failing, and potential businesses were turned off by the wastewater constraints. Finally, 2010 saw the adoption of a townwide sewer district, and three areas were designated as high priority the Northeastern Village area, the Quesid Commercial District in Southeastern, and the Five Corners area. How to move forward with the projects was another question, and public private partnerships were created. Through forging partnerships with developers, the town was able to mitigate some of the costs by having developers build some of the infrastructure needed to accommodate their project. But right now, as of May 2018, the construction costs are estimated at 16.8 million, and that is what the betterment, the, the SBUs, 577 SBUs, excluding the town's portion, gets divided up. So we're responsible for 16.8 million. So then I was like, well, how did it get that high? And so I started looking back at the meetings, you know, and, and Woodward, Woodward and Curran, when they were preparing for their recommendation for what, and this is, this is the consultant that the town uses for these projects. They were preparing the costs and, and suggesting what they recommend the estimated cost be. So when you work back from that, so they were, there was a discussion in November of 2000, 17, preparing for what they're going to recommend for the 2018 vote in May. At that time, they were recommending 11.6 million for the construction costs. Also at that time, Quisit started facing overruns on their construction costs for crazy reasons like, oh, the Department of Transportation says we need two inches of pavement, not four. Or, or I'm sorry, the other way around, we need four inches of pavement not two. Oh, the Department of Transportation, you know, took too long to meet with us. Like, we, we kept having to go back to them. And, you know, construction costs went up since 2015. So, Quisit's construction costs started adding up. So then, between August of 2016, or, I'm sorry, August of 2017, and then, April or so, just before the town vote, March or April, Woodward and Curran's estimate went up to 13.5 million for concern. With a hunt, with like, it went up from 11.6 to 13.5. And there's like a 1.5 million contingency fee in this project. And I understand that contingencies are probables, but we, many people within this district are in fixed incomes low incomes, they don't have $150 contingency in their monthly budgets. Like, you know, we're, we are the ones who are responsible for like a 1.5 million contingency. It's frightening. It's just frightening. The main point is whether you own a home or you own a business and you live in the district or you work in the district, we're looking for some, some equity mm -hmm. uh, with what's happened in the rest of the town. The cost of this project is exorbitant. And the betterment units are estimated currently at twenty-eight to thirty-two thousand dollars. At thirty-two thousand dollars for for a betterment unit, I'm responsible for seventeen. That's five hundred and forty thousand dollars. The plaza where McGuire's is is over three hundred thousand dollars in a sewer betterment unit. I'm looking for some equity with what other businesses have paid in town. You know, comparable stuff in the center of town was around hundred thousand dollars. I'm three hundred percent higher than a comparable business. That puts us from a business standpoint, at a competitive disadvantage to anybody else who does business in town. And I can't pass those costs on to my customers. I can't pass those costs on to my tenants. I have to absorb those costs because if I don't, I'll lose my tenants and I'll lose my customers. How much can I charge for a hamburger to pay for a $320,000 betterment? It's impossible. So for the past 26 years, I've been working seven days a week as hard as I possibly can to make a future and build equity in my business and everything I've done for the past 26 years is being ripped mm -hmm. right out from the business. We need equity, we need help, 
We need whatever the town can do to bring the cost of the project down, not only for the homeowners, but for the businesses as well. And, and that's why we're so in favor of passing this diff that's going to give us some funding relief towards the project. It's a first step. Is it enough? No, but at least it's a first step to give us some relief and take the burden off of people that are on fixed incomes, the people that are living in the condos, the homeowners, the businesses. Just, just make it equitable for us. The, the biggest thing that can help with betterments is bringing project costs down, right? So I'll, I'll get to that, but as far as the, the pressure of a betterment in an individual year, so town meeting has done a couple of things already uh, because this is not our first sewer project to reduce that pressure of the betterment. Uh, one, uh, both were through adopting provisions of state law. One was to spread that betterment out over 30 years so that's something that's on the tax bill, that, do, it, the, that large number for a betterment does not need to be paid back in one year. It's spread out over 30 years. And two is to allow the town to do that at the lowest interest allowed by law. And so we've done that, uh, and when we did that in Northeast, and what we saw was about 2.4%. So that spreads that out. That doesn't make the overall number necessarily decrease. So there's a couple of important um, things to consider there. So the town looks at, and I touched on this a little bit with the different financing sources, um, kind of an all of the above approach to what types of funds can we supplement these projects with. Um, you have general borrowing, where there's a relatively large amount of that programmed into this. You have mitigation funds from applicable projects. You have state grant money. Uh, one of the benefits, Mike mentioned, uh, giving this betterment estimate years in advance of a final number. Um, there's obviously, it's important to be transparent. But beyond that, it, it gives us a runway of time. Time is a really, really valuable resource for a few reasons, one of which is that grant cycles are typically annual. So if we're giving these betterment estimates two years before betterments are voted, that gives us a couple of grant cycles to kind of uh, numerous bites at the apple to go to the state, seek mass works funding, seek things like that. So we have some time to do that. So we're going to continue to pursue that. There are potential for um, grants, like mass works grants and maybe EPA grants, we don't know. Um, but at the moment, we are, this, this whole diff vote coming in for the town meeting, those are, those are promises, they're not guarantees. We want to focus on getting the diff passed in order, that, that is our first and best shot at reducing the betterment in a significant way. The, di um, the diff is step one. It's step one. But, and beyond that, we as a group are going to continue to work with the town to um, see, to, to apply for MassWorks grants, to see if there are any um, EPA funds available, because we are in a watershed district. Um, but we're at the very beginning of learning about what that means. Uh, we've sought. Uh, support through our legislative delegation to the extent that it's possible within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts budget for any kind of capital support. Um, but to kind of cut to the chase, the most meaningful project, the most meaningful way that the town is working uh, uh, to, to try and reduce that pressure from the betterment is advancing the, the DIF project. So the DIF is the District Improvement Financing Plan for the Five Corners area. It's a geographic area that exactly mirrors a five corner sewer district. Um, so that is a proposal that has been being worked on for well over a year. So over a year ago, we saw we were working towards the second part of this project. And we knew this is, this is one of the largest, um, I don't know the exact number, but it may be the largest non-building project the town's done in history. So you want to round out that financial portfolio as much as you can. And so the planning director came to me and brought up DIF as an option. It's not something that is been done in Easton before. And we have been, we have appropriated funding through town meeting in May to fund a feasibility study. Because you can't just say this project's expensive, let's put a diff there and pay for it. You need to have pretty rigorous economic analysis to justify that. Because one of the things that a diff would do is it would allow the town to effectively borrow against projected future tax growth resulting from infrastructure improvements today. So if you're going to do something like that, you want to make as informed uh, of a decision as possible. And so we've been working on that. We did a feasibility study over the summer of 2018. Uh, that feasibility study done by Camoyne Associates uh, came back basically in the affirmative, saying based on the market analysis we've done, 
we've done community planning charrettes, we've looked at your infrastructure, we think that a diff could, could make sense in this area. So we've been advancing a, a diff financing plan since then, and that is on the docket, it's on the warrant right now, for annual town meeting, which will be May 20th, uh, Monday, May 20th at 7 o'clock at Oliver Ames. So that is, that is a real concrete uh, proposal for something that could meaningfully reduce uh, the betterment cost. So what we're looking at with that diff program uh, is uh, there's, it's quite complex. It's all available online for anyone who wants to review it. It's easton.ma.us slash diff. But the long and short of it is that we think that that can support about four to five million dollars in bonding capacity to apply towards a project cost. And so when we had our preliminary betterment uh, estimates uh, projected back in the fall, uh, again, very early on the project, um, we did not want to overpromise, so we gave conservative estimates uh, that were up to 32,000 for a single family home. Looking at the diff proposal as it's advancing right now towards town meeting, we believe that if that diff is adopted in May, that that could meaningfully reduce that betterment by about 20% down to about 25,000, which is still a significant betterment, but it's comparable and equitable to projects we've done in Easton before, like Cuisa, which is finishing up right now. So I know that was really long-winded. I'm pretty bad with that. Uh, <laughs> but um, the, there's a variety of things the town's going to keep seeking grant funds. Uh, we're going to keep reassessing our betterment formula. As Mike said, we've been meeting with people pretty much constantly. We'll be meeting with trustees of the condos tomorrow. Um, and, but the most significant opportunity that's what it is, opportunity uh, to reduce pressure on that betterment for five corners is the DIFF proposal. Hi, I'm Alice McCow. Um, I live at Gaslight um, Village and I've lived there for 14 years. Um, I'm currently um, just retired about a year and a half ago, so I'm living on a fixed income. So this is kind of tough for me, the extra costs. Um, I actually bought my condo in 2005 before the um, real estate crash, so I paid top dollar. And um, right now, we were just getting back to pre-prices, um, getting better prices for our condos. And I'm already seeing them go up for the high 70s and selling for 250. So um, it's gonna be tough because um, to add Thirty thousand dollars to a home that's only worth two fifty. People are going to want us to take that out of our our profits. So um, it, it's really going to be devastating for us. Most people are um, couples um, or a single parent with, say, an older teenage child. Um, retired people like myself. So um, at, at pretty much all the condo units, so they give up your home and move to a condo, it's easier. So um, our septic system on my side of the condo, there's two sides to my condo, is in failure. And, um, but we've put off knowing that this project was coming. Had we, um, we would have replaced them, but we knew this was coming and we were, we were looking forward to it, but not realizing the cost. You know, it will really hurt us. Our prices are already going down, and why buy our condo when you can go out to 138 or, you know, the new apartments and what, you know, there's a lot of other choices out there. Each condo is being assessed the same as a single family home, two to four um, bedrooms. And um, right now we're, um, we have to sell as a one bedroom. It was the stipulation in our deeds when we when we, our units were built in the 80s. We're all getting active in the, the um, village, the neighborhood um, association here to try to bring it down because the estimate is 30,000. Um, that's just the betterment? That's just the betterment, not any of the other <laughs> hookup costs. Um, we're, it looks like if we can pass the, the diff um, which is kind of a loan that the city is willing to take out on future development. Um, when we can get some of that, they're saying down to 25. So it's still, and then they're going to let us pay it over 30 years. So, and it puts a lien on your home. When you have a betterment, there's a lien on your home. So when you go to sell, 
it stays with the land. So that means what's going to happen, and it's happened before at the condos, when we've done assessments, say, to do roofs. When you go to sell, the people that are buying want you to pay it off, mm -hmm. or they want the price lowered because they don't want to pay that's extra money above and beyond. So we know what's coming. They're either going to say in that, all right, you know, drop your price by 30000 25000 or they're going to want you to pay it off because sometimes um, a bank won't give you a loan when you have a betterment lien. On it. Some banks will not even um, give you a mortgage. So it's a difficult, and it's for all the homes, and they've nicely extended it for 30 years. Generally, it's 20 years um, because of the high cost. Because they knew we'd even it'd be worse for us. How would we pay that amount if we were restricted to only pay it to pay only have 20 years? But as a retired person, I won't even see the end of the payment. The the assessments have to be proportional. Right. So we've had people come in that have um, pled their very particular case. Uh, so using the condos, for example, a condo owner has come in and say, well, yes, I know many of my neighbors have two and three bedrooms. I only have one. Um, you know, we have to look at what the possibility of that property is, um, not an individual circumstance. We had a, a single family homeowner that has five bedrooms. They only use one of the five and we're looking for relief. You know, again, the bedroom's designed for five. That's its capability. You know, we have to assess it based on that. Um, and so if we made a, a change, uh, to one property, the change would have to be made to all similar properties in the district. Our group got together um, mm -hmm. when those those first numbers came out, and everyone was like up in arms and shocked, and everyone got together. And there's a lot of different interests and priorities within the people that live, work, and own businesses in the district. Some people need septic, some people don't. Some people can afford it, some people can't. Some people want it, some people don't. But the one thing everybody can agree on. Number one is that the cost of the pro project <laughs> is exorbitant. That seems to be the one thing that binds us all together. I, I, you know, and we, I think we have that same recognition from, from, from Connor, the town administrator, from Stephanie, and from everybody that we spoke with. They agree this is the most expensive infrastructure program that the town has ever undertaken. And that's why, it's, that's why the betterment unit is so expensive because of the cost of the project. It, it's, it's the longest project they've done. It's the most involved project they've ever done. That's why it costs so much. So they came up with this district improvement. I shouldn't say they came up with this. is legislation that allows the district improvement financing. What that does is they've done a study based on the properties that can be developed in town through the town's consultant. And they found that that potential development would increase the property tax revenue, new property tax revenue, by about $14.2 million. And that would allow, and, and, and the consultant recommended of that new property tax revenue, they recommended that the town borrows against that potential new property tax revenue of about $7.1 million. That's the district improvement financing. And that $7.1 million would be applied to the entire project to bring the cost of the project down. The town can't borrow that 7.1 because they have to do some debt service, so the amount they can borrow is between four and five million dollars, and that would help to offset the betterment units for the residents, the businesses in the town. The question to funding projects of this size, uh, what different kinds of funds are used in projects like this, um, sewer projects, including five corners. So this includes what we've done in Northeast and so including five corners. Sewer projects are largely financed through uh, the assessment of what are called betterments. And, uh, so betterments cr are one source of funding, but they're not the only source of funding for projects like this. So with five corners, I just kind of touched on there's a variety of different pieces. Uh, we have the capacity, we have the first phase of construction, design, engineering, and then the ultimate uh, portion of a project, phase two. That combines to an estimated cost of about 24 and a quarter million dollars. And there's a variety of different funding sources that contribute to that. So right now, and this is preliminary because the project hasn't been built yet, but right now what we are looking at is assuming $5 million of general municipal borrowing. Uh, that is related to the town's capacity because we are not allocating every gallon of sewer in the public project. So that's 5 million, which is about 20% of the total project cost. Uh, to date, we've applied 2.2 million in mitigation funds from Avalon, 
and Avalon is, is intertwined with the sewer project because they had a large mitigation payment that made the first phase possible. Uh, so that's 2.2 million, that's about 9% of the project cost. So far we've received 225,000 in grant uh, dollars, that's about 1%. So when you look at non-betterment funding, you're looking at about 31% of that estimated 24 and a quarter million uh, to be paid outside of any kind of betterment assessment. So that's about seven and a half million. That leaves what, what we call basically the amount to be bettered, to be recovered through the assessment of betterments of about 16.8 million. So that's about 69% of that project cost. And so there's a few important things there. Uh, these numbers are preliminary, but that, that percent, about 69% of a project uh, to be recouped by betterment assessments, that's proportional to the amount of the sewer benefit that is being allocated. So the betterments are not re recouping any sort of cost uh, for the excess capacity. This is directly related to uh, the amount of sewer capacity that is being um, allocated. Five Corners is the last and largest area to receive sewers. The partnership with Avalon Apartments on Roberts Drive whose developer made payments to bring the sewer line from Mansfield to the town, means the town could move the Five Corners area wastewater flow to Mansfield's municipal facility. With the Five Corners project, both town officials and a group called the Furnace Village Neighborhood Collaborative Group are trying to work together to implement the project while lessening the impending heavy financial burden. The project is slated to begin later in the spring or early summer of this year, and to conclude at some time in 2020. We're not against the project, we're not for the project, we're trying to bring the cost of the project down for everyone that's involved. That's Sewer's coming. Well said. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to stop it. You can try, the effort would be fruitless, whether you're for it or you're against it. It's coming, it's expensive. We've got to try and make it equitable, equitable and affordable for the people that live, work, and own property in the district.